good evening, everybody, and welcome to tonight's edition of The Daily Dose, your daily dose of something from God. So we are so glad that you are here. If you are somebody who's watching on Facebook tonight, would you do me a quick favor? Would you share this post to your personal page? It gives us a chance to get the good word out to more and more people. And if you're somebody who's watching this on YouTube, would you subscribe to Calvary's YouTube page? If you're someone watching on Cable Access, we are so glad that you are here, maybe consider inviting someone to come and join us tomorrow night. So, you know, lately I think that there are a lot of people that are asking the question, how do you know when God is calling you to do something? So I've been thinking about this, and I think that this question keeps bubbling up right now because we've been in this stay-at-home time where we have a little bit of more time to think and reflect on our lives. That's something that the pandemic has done for us. It's given us a chance to reflect on our lives. And so people have been asking me, how do you know when God is calling you to do something? And so I thought I would just take a look tonight about what the Bible says about how God calls people into action. And so I'm going to share with you how this works in Holy Scripture. So I'm going to use the story from Judges chapter 6 in our Bible as our example. It's a story about a man named Gideon. And Gideon, he finds himself in this war and he is desperate and he is praying to God. And I think we can kind of empathize with a little bit of that. So he's desperate and he's praying to God. He's saying, God, who will save my people? So this is where we'll pick up. So an angel of the Lord appears to Gideon and he says to Gideon, he says, the Lord is with you, mighty warrior. And then if you're reading, you can ch check out Gideon's reaction. It's so funny. He says, pardon me, Lord? So Gideon literally says, pardon me, Lord. Like, wait, what did you just say, God? And so Gideon replies to God. He says, if the Lord is with us, then why have all these happen things happened to us? If the Lord is with us, where are all the wonders that our ancestors told us about when they said, did the Lord not bring us up out of Egypt? <laughs> but now the Lord has abandoned us and given us into the hand of Midian. The Lord turns to Gideon and he says, go in with the strength that you have and save Israel out of Midian's hand. I am sending you. Again, Gideon is confused. He's like, wait, what? And he says again, pardon me, Lord. Gideon replies, but how can I save Israel? My clan is the weakest in Manasseh and I am the lowest in my family. Basically, Gideon is saying, back to God, how can I? I mean, I am not a warrior. I am not strong enough. I do not have any skills to fight. I am the weakest and no one's going to listen to me. I don't have the ability. I am not capable of this thing, God, that you are asking me to do. I can't do it. No, no way. So if you want to know how you can know if God is calling you to do something, it's usually when you say, no, no way. And then you give your excuse, like Gideon saying that he's the small and the weakest and the least. It's usually when God is calling us to do something, we at first reject the idea and give our excuses about why we cannot do it. You see, when God called Moses, Moses said, no, no way. You've got the wrong guy. I have a speech impediment and I'm a murderer. I cannot free your people. When God calls Mary, she says, oh God, how can this be? I am a virgin. There is no way that this could be possible. I could carry your child. When God calls Isaiah, he says, how can this be? Because I am a man of unclean lips. How can you ask me to speak for you when I know how unclean I am? But see, this is what God answers every single time. His people are like, nope, no way. God always answers, but I will be with you. Do you see, my friends, we know that God is calling us into something when God calls us into our weakness, into exactly those things that we are not awesome at, because it's in those things, in those weaknesses, in those excuses and those rejections, it's in that space where God has space to work. It's in those places where we don't have it all together, we are dependent upon God's action in our story and not just on our own action. And we have to rely on God in order to get the job done. 
Because you see right there in your weakness and in your holes and in your excuses, God will be with you. When I was 19 years old, I was pregnant and unmarried, but yet I still felt this call to do some work in the church. And everyone I knew all around me said that that there was no way a church would hire a teen mom to lead their teenagers and their youth. And I agree. I mean, that seems like a really bad idea. Not a very good example to the teens that I was leading because I knew how hard being a teen mom was. But there was this church and I kept kind of thinking about it over and over again. So I decided to just sort of send in my resume and see what happened. And to my surprise, they called me for an interview. But your resume doesn't really shout teen mom. And so in my interview, I did sit there and say, you have to know that I have a child. And in my interview, I said, I knew that I wasn't exactly the example that churches might want to have to work with their kids and their students. But then the chair of the call committee, she leaned in to me and she said, I was a teen mom too. And I'm pretty sure you're exactly the kind of person we want to lead our youth and kids. And it was just over 20 years ago and they hired me to start working in the church. And I've done that work ever since. You see, the apostle Paul says this in 2 Corinthians. He says, my grace is sufficient for you for my power is made perfect in your weakness. Therefore, I will boast more gladly about my weaknesses so that you'll know that it's Christ's power working in me. So how do you know that God is calling you into something? It's because you can't do it on your own. Instead, you're dependent upon God's grace and God's power to get you through it. And God won't leave you hanging. God didn't leave Gideon hanging or Moses hanging or Mary hanging or Isaiah or Angie or any of you. Because God never does. God says the same thing to you that he said to Gideon. Don't worry. I will be with you and we'll take on this challenge together. So friends, I ask you tonight, what is God calling you to do? What idea are you rejecting because you don't feel like you have the skills to do it? What vision and what problem does God need you to solve? Let's do it together with God.